Hey guys, ViscoseComb24 here, bringing you a real quick redstone video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all this. It is my super compact and the current smallest 7x7 flying machineless slime funnel door on Java Edition. Now, that's a really long name, but I'll be giving a short explanation as to why it's so long a little bit later. When I go on over to the backside, obviously it doesn't have a backside because this is a funnel door. Now, I've explained this a lot, and it's probably going to start getting annoying for some people, but I'll explain it again for those of you who might be confused. Because I know on YouTube, vault and funnel are sometimes mixed up a lot. When I say a funnel door, I mean this design but single-sided. And vault doors are this exact same design but double-sided. Small difference, but something to note, and I hope that clears up any confusion. When I flick the lever again, you can see we'll also all open. It's relatively fast, all things considered, um, considering its size. Although there is some weird logic on the top here. This thing is 13 blocks wide, 13 blocks tall, and 4 blocks deep. So it has a volume of 676 blocks. This is the exact same size as my Bedrock Edition design, just, you know, made on Java Edition. Now, I'm going to really quickly show why the top logic is so weird on the opening, because there is a good reason for it, I swear. Just set up a quick demonstration over here. Here we go. Put in the obsidian. There we are. So when I power this, this slime will all be moved down, and this sticky piston will get a one tick pulse. Expected. When I retract it though, it won't be able to pull the block back because it doesn't get a one tick pulse from this observer when it's stationary. So in order to get this block to be pulled back, I have to retract, then power it again, then retract, and there we go. That's basically what I had to do over here. And the way that I did this was by having this sticky piston here pull this block out of the way during the opening animation. So when I flip this lever, you can see the whole thing will close, just as expected, and this sticky piston is prepared to pull the block out of the way. When I flick the lever again, this sticky piston will pull the block out, depowering this 4 tick repeater, retracting that sticky piston, then it will quickly put it back into place before this 4 tick repeater turns off, repowering this 4 tick for a little while so that it can push down and then pull back up again. And so when I flick the lever here, you can see that that will all happen relatively quickly. Just like that. And then the rest of the retraction goes on on its own. So that's why the top is so weird and the opening is a bit longer. Uh, the bottom uses a sticky piston pushing an observer instead of a redstone block. Uh, for those of you who have seen my Bedrock Edition design. And this is because sticky pistons can't push redstone blocks up without being stuck like this forever. Because that redstone block is actually powering the sticky piston through quasi-connectivity. Sort of like how this piston right here is being powered through quasi-connectivity from above like that. And so it just makes redstone blocks pretty much completely useless in Java Edition doors. So my redstone block storage pretty much doesn't work at all on Java Edition. Instead, I have to use observers. And so the way this works is here for the extension, we have an observer on the underside of the slime powering the sticky piston here. But because I didn't want to have to do the weird thing that I did on the top with the retraction, extension, retraction again, and then finishing the rest, I opted for having this sticky piston here with the observer retract when I flick the lever off. Then this sticky piston, or, or this one, either one, I added them both in for symmetry, but only one is necessary. It will retract its block. And the extension and retraction of the piston is detected by the observer, giving this sticky piston a double pulse, pushing the observer up and then pulling it back down quickly. And a good demonstration of this is this setup right here. As you can see, it spat the observer out, pulsing this, and then retracted it again. And it all happened very quickly. That's what happens here. Just like that. The flattening, because I have this observer here, was a little bit weirder. I had to have this big slider that spans the entire bottom front of the door. And the way that I did this was I had it coming from these hopper timers that actually control these sticky pistons here. Oh, and as you can see, it does, it does a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. I <laughs> just... It does all. It controls a lot. It, the slider controls the sticky pistons down here, 
as well as the flattening for the sides and these single pistons. And so it sends their pulse into these sticky pistons, then that, these observers detect it, giving this sticky piston a double pulse, and same thing happens on this side. But it also powers this piston, moving the slider over, and later this hopper timer turns off, powering this sticky piston, spitting out that piston, and giving this another pulse. And so that is how the flattening is handled for the front. Very, very weird, but functional. There are a lot of quirks that I could get into, but I don't have much set up, and I wasn't planning on making a big tutorial or explanation video for this. If you want an explanation video, then you can let me know in the comments. I even had been wanting to make a tutorial. As you can see here, I had a big materials list, but I never got around to it. So you can let me know if you want to see it. I don't know if I'll have the time for a tutorial, but I may have the time for an explanation video. So let me know if you want to see that. And, uh, yeah, I've just had this lying around for a month, so I wanted to finally make a video on it. So that's all I got. I'm Viscose Chrome 24, and I'll see you next time.